The world was a different place in the 1960s. While some women clung to societal norms, others defied authority and were looking for men who did the same. Here are the most surprising things women found attractive in men 50 years ago. To see how much the ideal male body type has changed since the 1960s, we need look no further than the evolution of the superhero. Ho ho ha ha! Remember me, old chum? You jolly devil! In 1966, actor Adam West took on the iconic character of Batman. West's physique was sturdy and strong, but lacked the rippling muscles we often associate with superheroes today. The Atlantic wrote, his simple gray and black outfit only heightened how ordinary his physique was for a man regularly tasked with saving an entire city. In spite of his ordinary body, West became an overnight sex symbol. Contrast this with the superheroes of today, who typically come pre-packaged with a six-pack. Modern heartthrob Ben Affleck's portrayal of Batman is a far cry from West's. Affleck underwent a rigorous fitness regimen in order to bulk up for the role. His trainer, Walter Norton Jr., told Men's Journal, "...we wanted him to look like a thick MMA heavyweight puncher. Thick is right." In the 1960s, long hair became a symbol of the counterculture and was a fashion that was adopted by free-loving hippies who famously rebelled against conformity. While growing hair long was a more radical move for men than it was for women, the hairstyle was a symbol of freedom and modernism among both genders. Long hair also helped women weed out the dating field, as it separated those looking to rebel in this time of social upheaval from those looking to stick to the status quo. In Encyclopedia of Hair, A Cultural History, Victoria Shiro wrote, Many men adopted the new long hair or natural hairstyles to make a political and or social statement, whereas other men kept their hair in short styles to show that they were more traditional and conservative. Not all men grew facial hair in the late 1960s, but the grooviest dudes often sported some fuzz. Beards and mustaches were another way that men of the time could defy the clean-cut look of their more conservative counterparts. Beards were an all-but-dead trend in the 1950s, but the hippie culture of the late 1960s revived facial hair as an attractive accessory that appealed to the women of the counterculture. The hippie beard might have been enticing to female hippies, but the look was not well received by the more traditional minds of the time who viewed it as unkempt and distasteful. Then-Governor of California and future President Ronald Reagan said that hippies "...look like Tarzan, walk like Jane, and smelled like cheetah." Ouch! Need some ice for that burn? Part of the reason that women were so enamored with the legendary Beatles was their pageboy haircuts. Their longer locks challenged conservative gender norms, and women couldn't get enough. I love them! I don't care what anybody thinks! I love the Beatles for them, and I'll always love them! Even when I'm 105 and an old grandmother, I love them! The gender-bending look was subtle, but it was daring enough to draw the attention of women who were also asserting their independence and looking to upend convention. David Bowie, another 1960s icon, helped gender-neutral clothing gain popularity, and the singer is still remembered for his diverse and sometimes flamboyant costumes. Androgynous looks also caught on with women, blurring the line between male and female stereotypes. In 1968, Everett Matlin wrote in the Chicago Tribune, "...it's not just the way we look, the whole male-female relationship is confused. In novels, plays, movies, TV, all presumably reflecting life itself, men are weak, fumbling, impotent, while women are strong, decisive, domineering. All is topsy-turvy in a neuter world." Sorry, Matlin, but the times were a-changin'. Case in point? Some of the biggest sex symbols of the 1960s were rock stars. Towards the end of the decade, music was becoming edgier, and so was the look of music's biggest icons. One of the most notorious heartthrobs of the 20th century, Elvis Presley, came to prominence in the mid-1950s and was one of the first rock stars to wear eyeliner. By the late 1960s, Mick Jagger and the Rolling Stones were following suit and also wearing eyeliner. David Bowie also began to transition towards more flamboyant looks at the end of the decade and would eventually be known for his distinctive full-face makeup looks. The effect of men wearing makeup wasn't just novel but also subversive, yet another way of upending the carefully constructed gender norms of the day. To women, rock stars were a symbol of rebellion, which only made them more appealing. The makeup-wearing rock stars of the 1960s would lay the groundwork for the glam rock and glam metal movements of the 1970s. Characterized by men not just wearing a bit of makeup, but sometimes fully decked out in women's clothing. Hey, the heart wants what it wants. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more The List videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.